Right, stage one of information processing. These are the factors we're going to consider. Quick reminder that the input is our environment and our display and we have our sense organs to try and pick up everything that's going on in our environment or display. Uh, those receptors and the proprioceptors, how you feel uh, in the situation and your awareness of being in the situation will come into it. And then we've got two key terms, one perception and two selective attention and those two are going to be linked together. Okay, so as we said, our input, um, we've got three key areas really. What we see, that's our vision, and obviously our eyes pick that up. Uh, what we hear, also termed auditory, audition, and picked up by our ears, and what we sense, and these, uh, this proprioception or proprioceptors that detect the way we feel in a situation has also been referred to as kinesthesis and what you sense of your muscle and limb movements and where you are in your surroundings is key and there's another reminder of the fact that it is about what's in your environment and that's also termed your display. Um, hopefully the input is a relatively simple term for us um, but perception is often is construed. So here we have uh, a little diagram and there are perhaps two ways to perceive what's going on. Some of you might see a vase indicated in the white and some of you might see two faces and that perception is based on this definition and this definition must be imprinted in our minds. Um, perception is indeed the process of acquiring interpreting, selecting and organising sensory information. So everything you get from that display, perception is what we do with that in order to then be able to act and in the sporting sense that allows us to choose the appropriate action that is desired for our optimization of performance. Key term, very important. Now, as ever with these revision presentations, uh, we really are looking to get the marks in the exam and a perception, uh, as we've just talked about, tends to come out as a question for these three components that allow us to understand how we identify a stimulus. Um, so just to go through each one really, um, if you're detecting something, that means that you are picking it up. And that registration of the stimulus is through those sense organs, so ears, eyes, etc. And if we're not detecting something, we obviously can't then act upon it. So detection is the first stage of perception. Um, we then compare that to anything else we have in the memory um, that's a previously stored stimuli. And that previously stored stimuli means that we have seen something like it before, if not the exact same thing. And we immediately compare that um, in our memory um, to the previously stored stimuli we have and then we have this recognition and this recognition is key uh, because that corresponding stimuli that's in your memory and um, you have to be able to find it and if you can't recognize it from before you won't know what's going on therefore you won't be able to select the appropriate skill which will allow you to optimize performance so recognition really is key and as we've spoken about before in uh, in across other topics that recognition comes alongside the ability to have done it before in many different situations over and over again. So recognition we can train for and hence why we try and train in many different situations when performing skills. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear?
Okay, so if we haven't seen that video before, um, we've been directed to look at an element of that video, and our perception is that we're going to be counting the amount of passes um, that are made by one team. Consequently, we look very closely at how many passes are made, and I've no doubt that we got the answer 13, and we're very pleased with ourselves. The fact is that because we were directed towards a certain stimulus, we may have missed another stimuli. So our moonwalking bear um, may have been missed out. Even though it's in our display, we might not have attended to it. Now the point of this is that our perception can change depending on our experiences and what we selectively attend to, which is what we're coming on to next, can be directed by certain things. The, again, if you want to be able to perform to your optimum level, a skill in a sporting situation, we need to recognize the relevant stimuli and then attend to them and select the appropriate response. And um, so if you were to see this video again in a week's time, you would know to look out for the moonwalking bear as well as the amount of passes that were made because you've now attended to that stimulus and you can recognize it. Okay, so if I try and put that into a little bit of a sporting situation for you, this selective attention um, that means that you attend to the spe specific stimuli that you would like to and ignore the ones that aren't relevant. So just in this photo here, all the different things that are going on in the game to enable this kicker to hopefully get the ball over the post in American football, this crowd, okay, this crowd here, they're not required as stimuli. You don't, don't need them to be able to form the skill. Where the ball is in relation to your foot, very important but the crowd aren't. So you want to be able to attend to the relevant stimuli and ignore the irrelevant. And in order to be able to do that and selectively attend to the appropriate stimuli, you need to try and practice it in as many different situations as possible under great pressure, which will allow you to uh, attend to specific stimuli. Okay, so let's put this in a sporting situation for you. We're obviously going to use Paul Scholes, the greatest midfielder over the last 20 years, as stated by Sir Alex Ferguson. Um, and we're going to try and put perception and selective attention into his performances as, as a passing midfielder. So one thing we definitely know about Paul Scholes and uh, some of the other Man United team members is they have an awful lot of experience. So if we relate that to our theory of perception, it's based on the recognition of the stimuli around him. So Paul Scholes can filter out the stimuli that aren't important, so the crowd, um, uh, if someone's shouting at him out of the crowd, uh, the amount of money he earns, none of that is important to him. When he has the ball at his feet, he just wants to recognise where his teammates are, uh, where the defenders are, uh, where the ball is in relation to his feet and how he needs to get the pass over to one of his uh, teammates. So that recognition is easier for him because of the experience he has. It also means that he also uh, he can attend to the important stimuli. The reason he can attend to the important ones is because he's done it before. And he's done it so many times in so many different conditions, in so many different pressure situations, that he's better at attending to the important stimuli when he's playing at Old Trafford than maybe less experienced. Hence why football managers often speak about experience when it comes to the pressure situations towards the end of the season. So perception and selective attention can be attributed to the performances of Paul goals. As I say, he was one of the greatest midfielders that England have had in the last 20 years. Okay, so hopefully we feel okay with the first couple of stages of information processing in terms of the selective attention and perception. I just got two questions that we've uh, seen before in the last couple of years. One is to state the sensory information that might be used in badminton. And I've just broken it down so you can just see that visual, auditory, touch, and the kinesthesis or proprioception that we've talked about before. And um, this would just, in a question, have to be related to badminton. So, taking the visual as one example, um, just being able to see the shuttlecock uh, in flight and react to where it's going, um, that is a bit of sensor information that you are going to use uh, in order to be able to perform the skill. 
The uh, second question we've got um, is to explain the three processes that occur as part of perception, and that's that uh, D, C, R, detection, comparison, and recognition. So you'll notice they're the three, first three on the mark scheme, and you get one mark for giving DCR as the abbreviation, and then there's a relation to selective attention down here, and that relation means that the more experience you have in situations, that allows you to selectively attend to the relevant stimuli and the detection, comparison and recognition process helps you with it. And that's the first stage of our information processing revision.